All right, welcome. I've been uh, meaning to make this video for a long time. I finally picked up an LV2 and put, I don't know, maybe three, four cases through it. Um, I've just been messing with it for a little bit as well. And I feel qualified to, you know, weigh in on some thoughts here on, you know, what I'm going to call the official LV2 versus G6R. You know, how do they stack up and compare, you know, uh, 12 years between each other here. So a couple of caveats. One, uh, neither gun is in its fully stock configuration. I think this is fair because you can't buy a G6R new. Um, all of these upgrades that are on this G6R are things that you could buy right now to outfit your G6R. Um, same with this LV2. Really the only thing that is aftermarket is, um, you know, the kind of trigger and then, um, you know, the barrels on both of these, which a lot of people don't use the stock barrels anyway. So I, I will be making little caveats. I have some parts that I can kind of bring in to get them as stock as possible. And I think there are some things worth noting. And then I will give a definitive answer at the end here. So I think what I'm going to do is start at the bottom, work my way up, every part kind of side to side, and then we can kind of um, talk general overview and then we'll, we'll take these apart a little bit here. I'm not going to go too in depth, but I think looking at some of these parts, there's some things that can be gleaned here. So um, uh, the main thing I want to start with is that each of these guns was built for a different market segment, and each of them had different design considerations, different compromises that were made to accomplish the overall design goal with each of these platforms, and they did not have the same design goal. So with the G6R, um, the design goal was, be, was to be as small and as light and as nimble and as efficient as possible, whereas the LV2, the whole goals seem to be um, to not have macro line, to be able to fit a 9-volt battery, and to have this lever valve in an Ego. Um, you know, the Ego platform, and, I, and I'm being a little bit harsh, but I'm going to kind of get into that, but I think those were the design considerations of the LV2 because I think a lot of the design choices were dumb as fuck and don't make any sense, um, you know. But I think more importantly, you know, the lever valve, it was designed for a longer mechanical dwell to have a lower operating pressure to be softer on paint, you know, less felt recoil, a longer, smoother shot, um, whereas the G6R is a faster shot, um, just a classic pop-it valve, and, you know, it gets the benefit of that efficiency. So... I think the design principles, what they were going for, were a little bit different. The LV is more erring on the side of um, usability, ease of use, repairability, you know, blah, 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 where the G6R is definitely, it was designed for a price point. It was cheap as fuck at the time. Um, I, I think retail, it was like 950, 900. Um, you know, some of the standard cuts were a bit more. The Ripper was more. Um, the LV2 is, you know, even adjusted for inflation, the LV2 is twice the price of the G6R or about. So I, I think, you know, anything that's, you know, calling me unfair on the comparison, keep in mind that this gun is being produced this year and is twice as expensive as this gun that is over a decade old and was half the price. So, you know, right. Um, so kind of starting at the bottom, you know, and again, so the lever valve, it was designed for a, a very modern style of play. The G6R, I mean, it's got four CIs. It was designed for a very specific style of play from its time so uh, the comparison is unfair because both of their design objectives were different but the fact that they are both stacked to pop it valve guns it does make it an apples to apples comparison in my mind here so i, I think it's worth doing because this is the longest kind of pop it rivalry <laughs> you know that there is you know you got the bob long boys and the planet of the eclipse boys you got g6rs and egos you know um you know, the cyborgs and the aliens and, you know, that stuff isn't really in the conversation so much. So I think these are our big two players and kind of the last of a dying breed here. And I, I think this review is warranted in the current year um, just because I was able to trade my LV2 straight for a G6R and vice versa. Someone said, hi, I have a G6R. Can I get an LV2? And straight trades are being done. We are less than a year after launch in 2023. If you're watching this video, and the secondhand value on the LV2 is below $800, and 
standard cut G6R pricing is over $800. So we are seeing these economies kind of swap here, I think because, um, you know, in the back of everyone's mind, you know what I mean? Everyone was waiting for the LV2. You can't really give it to the G6R until we see what Planet does with the LV2. And then we got the LV2 and it was like, you believe, right? So now everyone realizes that there really is one Poppet King and it's the G6R. And, you know, I guess that's the preface to my review. So spoiler alert, I'm a, a G6R meat rider, but, you know, we'll kind of go through it a bit here. So let's start at the bottom. We've talked about operation a little bit. I'm sure we'll talk about it more. Um, let's just kind of go head to head on everything here. Um, and again, some considerations are, are being made because some things are not period correct, not accurate, you know, but just keep in mind that all of these things can be procured for a G6R at the time of this video. So um, starting with the casing, um, you've seen enough videos on these. These Eclipse cases are very nice. They are, you know, they're hard, soft, they're fantastic. They've got good space for barrels. They got a carrying strap. Good case, right? Fits the LV2. Now, Field 1 has their cases, which, again, is the best case in paintball right now because as a gun guy, you've got 10 slots for barrels. You've got a big open pouch for all your shit. You've got this you know, cover to put your gun in. It's got tie-down straps. You can put any gun in here. It's got your handles still. I love this case. The zipper kind of fucking sucks, but all things considered, I every single day, I have 25 of these cases. I think they're a fantastic case, great marker case. So, you know, if they were putting out a G6R in 2023, and in fact, the Ripper G6R, the last production G6R made by Field One, the current year, well, not current year, but newest G6R, did come in one of these cases. So I think that it's fair as a case comparison. Even though the standard G6R came in a fucking cardboard box with no manual, right? So packaging, easy win um, for Planet Eclipse. They take a lot of pride in that. It comes with a color manual. Bob Long gave you a computer printout telling him, telling you to kiss his ass. You know, you, know, you don't get anything, right? Um, you know, so I think packaging wise, LV2, head and shoulders above the G6R. You know, they know who they know who this is designed for, and you gotta have a case, you gotta have a manual, blah blah blah. Um, kind of moving our way down to the bottom here, two different kind of operational principles on the ASA. Um, on the LV2, you have the Pops ASA. I, I mean, at a certain point, an ASA is an ASA. I promise it's not going to be this much minutia. Actually, it will be. It's going to be a very long video. Um, I think the Pops ASA is totally fine. I am not a Pops meat rider like everyone else in the world. But, you know, the reason I don't like it is because, one, the screws are visible. Two, this pin is visible. Uh, you know, I just I just don't think... I mean, it's a great ASA, truly. No complaints, right? Like, no problem. But I, I don't think that everything about it is... I think it's a very good ASA. I think it gets overhyped a little bit. Um, whatever. I think it gets overhyped a little bit, but I do like that these grips are very firm, and this is, like, great for one-balling, right? It's a great ASA for that. So um, it has an extra dynamic O-ring in there. I think it uses some proprietary parts that I don't love. Um, so, you know, whatever. Everyone loves the Pops. The G6R, we're still rocking the cam drive, which I love because there's nothing visible on it. Like, just from a looks perspective, like, come the fuck on, right? Same thing, right in line with the grips. Great for one balling. Um, I think the retention screws on this are undersized. I think these are oversized and therefore correct. So I think from a ASA perspective, um, you know, people find the cam drives harder. Everyone loves the Pops. What can you say? I guess I gotta give it to the Pops. If the G6R had a Pops, I'd be, I'd be happy about it. Certainly don't think it's a bad ASA. Um, as far as the screen, the G6R actually had an OLED 10 years ago, which is very cool. Um, but the Planet One is better, you know? It's got this screen that kind of enlarges everything. It's very nice. Um, I do think the user interface on the Bob Long screen is much better. I think it's a lot cleaner. Um, you'll have to excuse me, I don't have a 
battery in this gun. I don't like to sit with batteries in there. So I will put one in very quickly so I can show you the screen. Of course, my Allen key is gone. Why wouldn't it be? What? What dog? Crazy town. Where is that Allen key? No way. Um, all right, I guess I won't be doing that, unfortunately. Oh, there it is. So I will put the battery in the G6R. And again, we are running into something that I think the Ego does pretty good, but you don't need to get into the grips all the time, so I don't really give a fuck about toolless grips. But there are our two screens, right? So I think the G6R... Um, there we go. I think the G6R, you know, user, like, what do you mean? Like, user one, like, who's using profiles on these? You know what I mean? It's like you turn on your G6R and it's the mode you're in and then your eye status. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, who gives a fuck about the rest of this stuff? I think the screens are comparatively bright. I really like the indicator light, um, you know on the G6R. I, I think, you know, it's certainly more feature rich on the LV2. Both of them can shoot perfectly legally. Um, I think the G6R is a little bit more advanced because it does support four CIs. Um, but I do think that the game timer is clunky. I do think that I fault, you just hold the trigger like it's hard to do in the heat of play. You know, they're both equally as programmable. Like, you know, Planet Eclipse interface is classic. I, I just don't think it matters too much, right? Um, this one is cheaper. If you have a board issue, you can get just the screen itself for like 25 bucks. It's a little bit cheaper um, versus the Ego. And as far as availability of parts, grips are half the price um, in more colors. And, um, you know, unlike every Geo or whatever, like this won't be switched between models and then you're unable to get this in five years or something, right? So um, here's kind of what we're looking like inside both of these here. We'll give a little look-see. And uh, it's actually funny how much of a mess the inside of the LV2 is versus the G6R. So uh, again, I think it's crazy because in my opinion, the entire driving principle of the LV2 was to fit a nine volt in it. And I say that because if they had just gone with a rechargeable battery, they could have used the CS3 frame effectively. And can you use the CSA frame? A modified one. You could have had the regulator in the frame, could have had the board, could have had the nice, thin, same profile, same grips. You could have had that exactly the fucking same as the CS3 and it would have been ergonomic and awesome and great to you know touch and great to feel and then with your hpr with your hpr in the grip frame you would only need to fit one of these you know one of these cartridges in here you could just have the lpr in here and then have some room for a rechargeable battery all this room for a rechargeable battery I mean, rechargeable battery's not that big it would have brought the dimensions down so much right so i think the Planet Eclipse desire to use a 9-volt battery for some reason really dictated the form factor of this marker in a way that is very unpopular. I, I don't people do not like the ergonomics of the LV2. I think it's an overmolded big rubber hunk of bullshit, to be honest with you. It feels like you're holding a brick. You know, I'm I'm over six foot tall, I got pretty big hands. You know what I mean? And without the grips, it feels pretty fine. But once you start putting all this stuff on it, it very quickly gets too big. So you can really see the difference here. You know, we went vertical on the Noid, horizontal on the Noid. The G6R LP hose goes from here to here, moving the air to the back of the ram. On the, on the LV, here we go, here comes the air. It's, it's crazy. It's like 10 feet of hose in here. G6R is like one inch. Um, frame is thinner in every dimension. Um, I do, you know, we'll save the top part, but I mean, you get the idea. Just frame to frame, anyone who's held a G6R can tell you that it's 
thin as fuck and the grip frame is ergonomic. The trigger's great. And on the LV2, it's just not the case, right? I, I think if they would have gone with their two double A's maybe set in like this at the front, you fit that reg in there. Like, I, I think there's other ways to do it. I think this was not an ergonomic setup. I think they did a bad job. Um, you know, the air routing on this is so much cleaner, just whoop, right into the manifold. This is going everywhere. You got a plug here. That's another static O-ring you have to worry about. I, I just, you know, <laughs> you know, you got this big screw right here. G6Rs is through the body. You know, I, I, I don't know. I, I think this was not thought of correctly. Um, I think the nine volt was not, should not have been the main design consideration, especially when you have all of this fucking space up here. You know what I mean? But from the bottom of the Noid to the top of the battery, I've seen boards that are smaller than that. I mean, look at this board. You could have done it, Planet Eclipse. You know, I think this board in this position, you know, I don't know. I, it just seems crazy to me. It's too big a compromise. I, I don't understand it, right? So, you know, um, I think Bob Long is a fucking dumbass. <laughs> I think he made a lot of stupid design considerations, but I, I think going all in on a nine volt at the expense of all ergonomics has hurt the platform. I think people think the LV is too big, whereas the, you know, the 1.6 was at least a little bit more ergonomic, right? Um, which kind of leads me to, you know, something else I wanted to touch on, which is, you know, let me zero this out. But, you know, a big thing people talk about with the G6R is, you know, the split body and these eye screws that kind of come out, right? But like, let's look here. What is the widest point on the G6R? Widest point on the metal on the G6R is 32.48 millimeters, right? Like on the LV2, our widest point, the top of this body here is, is the same. I mean, the widest point, if we go to the bottom of this frame here is, I apologize, 28.75, is that the widest point? It's not, hold on. Widest point here, 30.31. So it's like, that's what, and that's the whole fucking body. Like that's what I'm saying, the G6R is one spot that's wide because of these two retaining, retaining screws for the split body. But like, when we get to the general proportion, you know, it's still even have the fucking grips on. 24.54, you know, 19.38, you know, here 20, let's do the top two, 20.92, 23.90. It's like every dimension is fucking bigger, right? Like it's crazy. So like this is grips off by the way, grips off. This is 50.44, grips off. This is 51.75, oh, it's on the screen, sorry. 50.14, is that what I said this one was? 50.14, yeah, okay, I mean, right. <laughs> the LV2 with no grips is, is the same depth as the G6R, you know, with grips on, right? So if they could have somehow kept it this way, it would have been good. But then let's, let's do this part, shall we? You know, I need to get back in here, but just for illustrative purposes here, like, let me show you what I mean. Like this thing is a, fucking beast. It's a monster. <sighs> Hold on, I've made a mistake. I mean, I think these grips are pretty smart. Like, I think they're good. I don't give a fuck about toolless grips because it's not something I deal with that often, but like, let's, let's do this now. 57.04. Crazy town. You know, from the trigger... To the back of the grip is 60. The trigger to the back of the grip on the G6R is 55 millimeters. So it's like, it's bulbous. Every dimension is just bigger, right? And my the only dimension that matters to me is from the nape of your hand to the midline of the bolt because you want the firing action as close to where your grip is as possible. So I'm saying that's like 41. And on this, you can't even get up there because it's so fucking big. So on this, 
I mean, it's, it's pretty much pretty close. 44 to the midline of the bolt, 45, you know? Like, it's just the closer all of the reciprocating mass is to your actual hand, like, that's less felt recoil. Like, if you're up, if you're holding down here and it's, you know, you've got a fulcrum on your wrist then, right? Like, that sucks. So, you know, I, I just, I don't get it. I, I think that the battery dictated a lot of these design considerations. You know, all the die guns are rechargeable. Lux is rechargeable. You know, like just use a rechargeable battery. Like nobody gives a fuck. Um, as far as the rest of this here, I mean, I'm not gonna lie, right? Like the wiring harness in the G6R is crazy. Like it, it's not all roses, right? There's this little screen retaining clip that breaks all the time. These screws strip all the time. Like, it's not good vibes over here on the G6R. Like, there's some shit that's, you know, all these O-rings are, like, metric and stupid. You know, like, this button falls out all the time. Like, it's just, it's not, you know, but a little bit more can be forgiven, right? Um, which kind of brings me to these triggers, right? Which, at, at first pass, you're like, the LV trigger is great. And I'd say, absolutely, I agree. You know, there's very little slop, very little slop. They both are very adjustable. You know, they both ride fantastic. They both have the same, you know, um, weight of micro switch. I'd say, but in order for the LV to accomplish this, there's fucking one trillion tiny screws. There's like the trigger into the thing, into the bracket, into the frame. It, it's, I'm telling you, and this is one screw. This is just one, one screw holds the trigger in. You get shot in the trigger, it's a thousand screws. And as everybody knows, Taking little tiny screws in and out all the time is a recipe for stripping little tiny screws, which is why the LV does in fact win on eye covers. Like, say what you will, that's fucking badass. So, you know, this is one screw to take this off and then another screw in there for the eyes to be held in. These eye cables, so much more robust than G6R eye boards. So even though, I, you know, I think that Having 4C eyes is fucking sick. This is just a ticking time bomb. You chop one ball, you don't clean it all the way, it's gonna corrode, it's gonna ruin your eyes. That's just a fact. Every single G6R is gonna have corroded and ruined eyes given a long enough time scale. It's just, you know, invariable. This, just a, a fucking lead with, a, with an LED on it. No issues, you wipe it off. Detents, same kind of thing. This is overmade. I, I think Planet Eclipse got it right 100 years ago, you know? You know? It just can be the little fingers, like that's okay. Um, they do turn to rubber, they turn to jelly, whereas these are gonna be robust for a long time, but they're proprietary. Like you put a MacDev D10 in there, like you can always figure something out with an Ego style D10. It's just no issues, right? So eyes, detents, assembly. You know, I like the idea of 4C eyes. I don't think 4C matters in 2023. Um, so I gotta give it to Planet Eclipse here. I think it's, it's better on the Ego. Although, like, why, why do this? Why do this routing? You know what I mean? Is it just out of convention? Like, why not just come straight down like this? Why not have a tiny eye cover? Like, why not set it up like the CS again? Like, you could get a light pipe in here. You put your eyes kind of closer to the bottom. You're going to get rid of that last ball bounce. You know, you come from here to here. That's not that far a distance. You know, we're talking... You know, like, I think it could be done again, but it's like, oh, we got to put the eyes all the way back here because that's how egos look, I guess. I, I just, why not route it this way and get all of this weight down and carve this down, right? Whatever. Um, now, I think that's, I don't want to say cosmetic stuff, but it's like, just look how fucking thick this is. Like, it's crazy, you know? I don't know. It's just, it's crazy to me. So, um... You know, and I'm doing a lot of favors with the grips off here. So, like, let's do this. Let's line up our ASAs. And as you can see, if we line up our ASAs, the G6R is taller. Absolutely. Our rams are at about the same thing, our upper ram tubes. But it's a lot more material on the top. The feed neck is much lower on the LV2. But as you can see, it's pretty much the same, <laughs> you know. And every other, like the bolts are in the same spot, rams are in the same spot, feed neck's a little bit taller, and the stock feed neck is even, you know, taller than that. Um, if we are looking at it from this perspective, 
as you can see, the G6R is shorter. You know, the grip isn't as far forward. It's all about the same, to be honest, except for this big LPR. So that's, that's what I'm saying. This is where they landed to just get rid of this. And it's like, I can, like, who cares? Like, just have an LPR on the front, right? Um, if we're looking in terms of, you know, when our barrels are lined up, you know, just to give you a little bit of, a little bit of context, right? Um, I can weigh these if you want. Maybe we do that, do some weights. That I can do. I can do weights, no problem. Okay. So let's take a look. And I am going to put the grips back on for this, because that is a part of it. And again, grain of salt, because the G6R does not have the stock feed neck, but you know, I think that is marginal in terms of weight here. Um, so let's put this back together and then we shall weigh them. So let's use our units. What do you think? Let's do pounds, sure. One pound, eight, eight. Oh, the cable set on it. One pound, 1.8885 for the LB2. For the G6R, 1.882 is the score to beat. 1.43, let's go. That's what I'm saying. Like, lighter. You know, we pulled out the calipers. It's thinner. Like, it's, you know, you're just touching metal. It's like, that's why people like luxes. It's not just this big, overmolded fucking rubber everywhere. Like, give me a break. You know what I mean? Like, we're sick of the overmolded rubber. Or maybe we're not. You know what I mean? I'm, I can only speak for myself, I guess. But... Um, so lighter, as we've seen in the actual proportion, you know, this is squeezed in a bit tighter here in this regard. Um, you know, it's a little bit, you know, all the other dimensions are the same, but it's like, it's so much thinner. Like your fingers are only this far apart versus on the LV2. It's like, you have to, it's like you're wearing mittens, you know, you're holding a big, a big thing, which again, that's not objective. You know, that's just preference. But I mean, if you're looking at it, like, Right here, you know, 20, 23 versus 39, 40. It's almost twice as thick. Like it's just, it's crazy to hold and you can't, like look where your thumb is versus your barrel, right? Look where your front finger is versus your barrel. On a G6R, like you can get, you know, like I, I will, you know, do one of these. Like, I'll hook around the barrel. Like, you can't, you know, it's just, it's too big. Your, your, your thumb is this distance. I mean, look at this distance from bottom of here to top. That is 67.35 versus 56.7. Like, no contest, right? It's crazy. Um... Again, uh, small things, but, you know, it, it, on the paintball gun, it is a game of inches, right? Like, it's, and here I am putting some grips on, like, haha, Nick, you got, you fucking idiot. Like, you have to use screws to put your grips on. But, like, who cares? Like, how often are you taking your grips off, right? Like, I certainly don't mind. It's not that big a deal. I mean, are toolless grips cool? Yes. Do I think that like the 180R has a great grip setup? Yeah, one screw. I don't know. That's pretty nice, right? Pretty cool. So we will finish our tour as we go up. Trigger, you know, it's a wash, but you know, anyone who shot a Bob Long will tell you Bob Long triggers are where it's at. This distance right here is just fantastic. 
versus here, which is, you know, your fingers are almost fully extended versus on the Bob Long, like my, my knuckles are past the trigger, right? Um, which brings us to the actual bolts themselves. So I run teched bolts, but I do put LV2 bolt tips in my tech bolts, right? So, you know, say what you will, Planet Eclipse has been doing R&D on bolts. They got those slow-mo cams. You know, I will give them that. But versus the best Bob Long bolt you can get, you can see that we're, we're basically saying the same thing here. Look at these inlets. Like, you know, three O-rings, three O-rings. Like, the LV bolt is mounted on the tip of the ram, and the G6R is mounted a bit further back, like middle of the ram. Um, I do like it mounted to the front of the ram, to be honest with you. I think that's better from a leverage perspective, and I, I think the inlet is a little bit bigger, a little bit nicer on the LV, to be honest with you. Um, these pillows on the G6R bolt are fucking stupid. You're going to shoot them out. You know, I think it chokes your airflow a little bit. Um, on the LV, you got a nice big open thing here. Let me see. Yeah, just a big... Big hole, big open face. The G6R on the premium bolts. You know, you've got a little Venturi in the back with that pillow. I think I, I, I never break paint in either, right? So, you know, it's a case of who gives a fuck. It's, you know, it's basically the same. Although the LV does have these little dimples that tell you where you put your bolt in. That's pretty nice. Um, G6R did come with some pretty bad bolts. So, I mean, stock bolt, you gotta give it to the LV. But even upgraded bolts. I think the upgraded bolt for the G6R is, you know, you got to spend money to get a bolt that's as good as the LV. I will 100% give it to the LV. I think it's got, you know, nice ramped face. Like, it, it, it's, it's good. It's a good bolt, right? No issues. I think the bolt pin, the retention system, is nicer than the G6R. G6R doesn't really you know, smooch up to that ram. It just kind of sits in there. There's more slop, you know. You're going to have more breech wear on the G6R than on a comparable LV. Um, this just does such a nicer job of hooking into that ram. There's just very little slop. Um, you know, which brings me to, you know, kind of an overarching complaint I have with the G6R is that it's very fussy, and Bob Long is fucking crazy. It's 10,000 different screws. They're all very tiny. All of these metric O-rings, you know, blah, 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 right? In case, mostly this one. Um, I think the stock ram just bumps into a piece of plastic on metal. You get that terrible pinging, so much so that a private company had to make a not pinging ram, a zero ping ram. Um, you know, the LV, on the other hand, has an air bumper in the ram there's an o-ring on the back it goes into a pocket i think the actual you know ram mechanics of the lv2 are better it's mounted at the front of the ram it's got an air bumper it's got a bumper on the ram you've got two ram weights it's a little bit more adjustable that's nice um you know but where it interfaces with the internals that lever valve you know you're lengthening your mechanical dwell perpetually that's what the lever valve does You've got a huge shot volume at a low pressure. I think these run at about 115 on, you know, HPR. Whereas the G6Rs, you know, you're, you're 185, 190, 175, you know, if you're getting kind of crazy. But you're like 180, so it is a lower operating pressure on your high pressure regulator um, on the G6R because their design principle was cleanest air paths, smallest contact surfaces, and just short and quick, just bing, bing. You know, we have this ram going super fast, very small surface area at a high pressure, just binging into this ram, um, binging into this ram uh, valve, pops the valve open very briefly, um, which is why it's so efficient. So, you know, to give you a data point, I think the best efficiency data I've ever seen on an LV2 so far, and it was with a light ram, SFRs, like all the way open, fastest cycle speed they could get, it was 1,700 shots out of a 68 i think dwell was at six and i don't think the dwells are 100 percent comparable i don't know you know what the volt you know voltage pulse i don't i don't you know numbers are just you know whatever um you know g6r has a comparable dwell you know but um you know the operating pressure is a lot higher so things are moving faster your valves closing sooner the air's at a higher pressure 
um, you're getting greater you're getting greater efficiency. Um, you know, on a 68, you're going to be at a uh, high pressure pop at 2,500, 2,600 shots. Low pressure pop, but you're still probably pushing over 2,000. You know, 2,100, 2,200. You know, if you're rocking a modern tank, you're going to go all day on a G6R LP2. It's just that you know. G6R is the efficiency champ. Like, it's not even a part of the review. Say, so if you're rocking a G6R, it's because you're an old man and you care about efficiency, right? Um, so, I think efficiency, you got to give it to the G6R. That's kind of the claim to fame, right? Um, you know, continuing to work our way up. I will say, in terms of dynamic seals, I hate, oh, fuck me. I hate this reg setup on the LV2. You know, this little retention clip here that you do this, you can pull your your low pressure and your high pressure out. There's just a fuck ton of little O-rings in here. You know what I mean? And uh, you think that someone else could do it in a way that there is less O-rings, a.k.a. Bob Long. So if, if you count Schrader valves as a dynamic O-ring, I do not. I count them as a face seal. I mean, they... The O-rings are not moving, you know, being pedantic, I suppose. Um, this has less dynamic O-rings. So to give you an idea here, on the LV2, and let's just pull out the high pressure, I suppose, because um, the low pressure is similar. You've got this piston, spring, O-ring. It's riding in there, there's an O-ring. Around that is an O-ring. You know, there's just fucking O-rings everywhere, right? Versus the G6R, She's beauty and she's grace. She's elegant. That's it. Here's your shim stack. That doesn't even need to come out. You got some Bellevues in there. That's it. Got one fucking O-ring in your HPR. That's it. There's your maintenance. You're done, right? You got a Schrader. Pops open. You know, that's going to leak. You replace it. I mean, I, I will give you that. The LV2 has less consumables. If anyone stops making Schrader valves for Bob Long guns, you know, we're all fucked. That's just, you know, there's no no ifs, ands, or buts about that. Like, we're we're all fucked. They, you know, so I have about a thousand that I have just in case here. But, so here is, here is our LPR, here's our HPR. Um, as you can see, those kind of just right in there, feeling pretty good. All right, let's see. You're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. That goes in there. And then our LPR. Did I swap these fucking rings? I don't think so. Ugh. Come on. Come on, you crazy bitch. Where are my pistons? There we go. again. So here is our LPR. Here is our HPR. These get these crazy little things. You know, it's just, it's like, it's, I don't want to say it's a lot because it, it's really not. Like, it's not a huge barrier to entry, but, you know, where do I, where does this clip go? It goes there and there. Okay. And they put our clip in, right? Like that's there's your there's your service on your LPR and HPR. Like it's just it's crazy, right? Uh, you know, I don't necessarily enjoy it, but what can you do? Here's another thing, and we'll we'll go through this in a second. But um, you know, I, I think the G6R is a more easy like that's. This is easy. LPR, same thing. You screw this off. I'm going to have to get a little wrench. But, you know. And there's your, there's your piston. Again, it is one O-ring. And I, I guess now that I do this, this doesn't really any easier. <laughs> 
but it feels easier, especially because I, I think like those die regs, like the hyper regs, you have those piston stocks riding on super small little O-rings and it's like they're always fucking leaking and when they're leaking, it's like there's, there's just one O-ring. There's one O-ring per regulator on the G6R, which is, is so easy from a maintenance perspective. But, you know, I'll, I'll give it to you. The, the RAM, the RAM setup on the LV2 is better. Um, I don't think the regs are any more consistent. I think they're higher maintenance. Um, but this O-ring on the back, the G6R is bad. Um, I don't, I don't like that. So that's something I would change. You know, again, bolts, eyes, you've kind of gone through all that. Feed necks, stock G6R feed neck is trash. I think that there should be a little boss on this feed neck here, which they, again, they did on the rippers. So on the rippers, this is as close as you can to a stock G6R. There actually is a little lip. Um, the feed neck sits in that rip, kind of like the T-Rex mounts, you know, like a Empire mount or whatever. Um, it does have a wheel, it does have a lever. Planet feed necks just blow it out of fucking the park. No, no doubt about it. You know, the offset for last ball bounce and, and you know, no contest, right? Um, I also do like that um, the valve on the LV2 doesn't have an O-ring. This has a little tiny O-ring. I think from a maintenance perspective, since there is not a O-ring on the valve, like you can just run this until it breaks. This is gonna require pretty constant maintenance, which, you know, it's a tale of two cities, right? Like that's what it is. If you're buying a G6R, you are signing up for routine maintenance. You are signing up for taking care of your stuff and moving things and you know, doing nice things, right? For an LV2, you're gonna throw it in your bag, which is fine. But I think if you want to have the benefits of a G6R, which are size, efficiency, faster cycling speed. I mean, you, on a G6R, you pull the trigger, ball's coming out. On LV2, it's it's a bit softer of a shot in that regard. Um, I'm gonna attach a video, maybe at the end of this video, doing a shot comparison, um, little streams, and you can kind of see the volume and everything. But, you know, I think G6Rs, they shoot they, you know, neither is any quieter or any louder, which is, is which is what's fucked up, to be honest with you. Like, the LV2 has built its namesake on soft shot, um, but I think the G6R is volume-wise, decibel-wise the same, but it is condensed into a much shorter interval, so it feels different, versus, you know, the LV2, the shot is... It's longer, so it feels quieter. Um, the G6R is a much more mechanical, you know, faster shot. Um, I, I, is that everything on these? I mean, I'll pull them back out, but I mean, as far as the rest of the stock stuff, barrels, yeah, LV beats it by a fucking mile. I think the S63 is a great barrel system. It looks great. I, I, use, I use their FL barrels on all kinds of stuff. I love Eclipse barrels. Um, G6R barrels were just old CP two-piece barrels. And then, you know, more recently, you know, if you bought a G6R and... You know, current year, if you bought a Ripple, it would be, you know, the AccuLock kit, which I think is a very good barrel that just suffers from being uh, just fugly, just the world's ugliest barrel. Like, somehow both of these companies decided to have the fugliest barrels of all time stock with their guns. Like, I think the S63, you know, the chunky milling back here by the window, fugly. But not nearly as fugly as the AccuLock, right? Um, I think the parabolic tip helps a lot with the AccuLock looks. I think they've got some other backs that look good. I think insert-wise, it's all the same, right? Like, who gives a fuck? But the stock G6R barrels are not good-looking and not um, well-ported. I think the S63 is much better. Um, so for me, what is the review? What does this mean? You know, I've, I've given you some statistics. We've looked at the insides. I think in terms of, you know, the things that I care about, size, G6R wins. Weight, G6R wins. Um, number of dynamic seals. It's a tie, technically, if you count the Schraders. If you don't, it's the G6R. I think it's easier to maintain. This will require less maintenance. Efficiency, G6R. Ergonomics, G6R. Cycle speed, Top balls per second, that's going to be G6R again. 
creature comforts, you know, feed neck, bolt pin, you know, ram cap, shit like that, all to the LV, barrel to the LV, packaging to the LV. So, you know, they're kind of duking it out side by side. It just kind of comes down to what's important to you. If it's ergonomics, it's not the LV2. If it's efficiency, it's not the LV2. And if it's, you know, shot characteristic, I think it's identical. The G6R is as stable shooting as the LV2 in terms of sound. Um, this is whooshier. It kind of shoots like a spool. This very much so shoots like a poppet. Um, I think in terms of shot characteristic, the characteristic is very different. You can only prefer one or the other. I don't think one is objectively better. I think this is squishier and longer. This is crispier and shorter, more mechanical. Bing, bing, whoosh, you know? Um, you know, that's what you're going to get with this super long mechanical dwell, right? Low pressure, big wide open valve, whooshing, right? Um, I think they, I think the G6R is an ergonomic monster, but you know, I get it. It's, it's 12 years old. Parts are getting harder and harder to find. Um, noids were still getting new board electronics, boards, eyes, all that were getting new through sci-fi. All the O-rings are standard, you know, it, it's just these Schrader valves, you know, the daughter board, there's some consumables that, you know, you're going to get more longevity out of an LV2, maybe. You know, history has not been kind to Planet Eclipse. Like, die? Like, all their shits use the same solenoid for 50 years, you know? Planet Eclipse changes their solenoid every generation, and they all suck ass. So, who's to say? Maybe this is going to be the next, you know, Geo 3, Ego 5, Ego 6, where it's just the noids just shit their pants all the time and never work and always go bad just from sitting, right? Like, we just don't know. Um... I don't think Planet Eclipse has been making guns from a longevity perspective for a long, long time. And I think they, they finally are, or so they say. Um, you know, so we'll see. It's yet to be seen. You know, the, the good thing about the G6R is that we've got 12 years of time, you know, telling us its shortcomings. And there are some. Tiny screws, hard to tune. Well, not hard to tune. It's hard to find the desire to tune it. Um... You know, they're a bit more error prone. And if you go to an event with a G6R, Field 1 is not going to fix it for you, right? You're, you're kind of on your own. You have to be a crotchety internet paintball guy <laughs> to have a G6R, right? You're going to have to get a test, pressure tester. You're going to have to diagnose your own stuff. You're going to have to be a gear hobbyist. There's paintball players and then there's gear hobbyists, right? There's people that drive race cars and there's people that restore and, you know, classic cars and rub them with a diaper you know there's people that run shops and you know make little parts and like working on cars and there's people that like racing cars you know what i mean and i think these are the kind of different philosophies that we have here which you know if you're the type of guy that believes in diminishing returns that is the type of guy i am you know i think for more work more maintenance more troubleshooting more potential issues i would say reliability um, if you can be okay with that, you're going to get a better package. It's going to be as stable of a marker. It's going to have the same amount of kick, twice the efficiency, half the, you know, 30% less overall dimensions, higher resale value. Like it's a classic and, you know, you go to the field and you pull out a G6R and men want to be you and women want to be with you. You know what I mean? Like, but you know, if you're shooting a pop in 2023, you're a badass, you know, but the LV2, you know, I had I had all kinds of egos. I had an Ego 9 that I had for a long, long time. I loved it. You know, I love the Ego. I love Planet Eclipse. I, I love, you know, all the the compromises they did make. Like, it, they made a lot of compromises to get a poppet valve to shoot like this. And I think that that's cool. But I think the ergonomics are bad. If this was in a better package, it would be much more... Um, it would command more respect, I think. But tiny people, this isn't for them. You know, I, I just... It's hard, right? I think it's tough, but I think, you know... There's something for everybody. Like, that's the cool thing. Oh, that's what I was going to say. G6R. Let's look at this, boys and girls. Let's take a look here. You know, I'm going to air it up. That's it. Air it up. Degas. Clears the hall marker. 
Whereas the LB2, this shit still has air in it from when I aired it up after I reassembled those rags. Like, let's look. Air it up. It bleeds, but it does not. I have to turn this on. There you go. Crazy that you don't have a gun that fully bleeds in 2023. I don't appreciate that. Um, so, you know, I think that's kind of the difference here. People that, you know, are kind of like shooting at trees in their backyard on the weekends or during the week. People who just want to play, you know, get an LV2. But if you want to play with a little bit of style, if you want to be a gun enthusiast and be a part of paintball culture other than you know, brackets and who's on that team. Cause like there, there's two worlds, there's two paintball worlds. There's, you know, the player culture, you know, people who are tracking stats and who won this and who won that and blah, blah, blah. And then there's like gun people who, you know, collect angels and, you know, make their own parts and like doing builds, you know, there's gear people and there's sport people. And, um, I think the G6R is for gear people. Um, and that's why I think it has this reputation of being finicky and unreliable, which if you don't give a fuck, if you're not going to clean it and throw it in your gear bag, it absolutely will be. But if you do the bare minimum, after every weekend when you go play, you run a squeegee through everything, take your eye covers off, wipe everything off, you know, lube your HPR, lube your RAM, like you won't have any issues. And then when you do have an issue, you just change one of the five dynamic O-rings. Like there's just not much to fuck around with on, right? So that's my LV2 versus G6R video. Um, you know, for me, the answer is a clear G6R. I think it shoots better than an LV2. I think it has a more tactile, deliberate feel that I really enjoy. Um, I think it's got a crispier, snappier shot that is effectively the same decibel level. And, you know, effectively. I don't think that's, it's probably not actually the case. I think it, you know, I think it's sharper. You know what I mean? It's the difference between a, you know, an arrow and a, and a club, right? A mace and a sword, which is, they're both going to fuck you up, but ching versus boof, you know? Like the LV2, it's very soft by design. It's a low pr pressure of air at high volume. This is a high pressure of air at a lower volume. So it's it's just design philosophy, right? Very slow release, very fast release. Um, you know, very high action speed, very low action speed. So in that regard, I think it's cool that there's that big of a differentiation. You know, if I was doing this video with a, a cyborg or something, it'd be less to talk about. There was less design considerations made, in my opinion. Um, so as much as I say when it comes down to preference, it doesn't. It comes down to what your goal is, right? So if your goal is to play paintball on the weekends, when you're done, throw your gear in a bag and then, you know, take it out next weekend and play, just, you know, get an LV2, sure. If you're that type of person, you're probably going to be upgrading guns pretty frequently every two, three years. Who gives a fuck about longevity and parts availability, right? But if you're the type of guy to buy like a Twister LV2, oh, you do care about gun culture. Just buy a fucking G6R. Get a Dragon. Get a Ripper. There's a whole world out there. You know what I mean? Um, you know, it's cool that a 10-year-old gun can still compete, still has moderate parts availability. There's a little community of people keeping these things running and... You know, they're smaller, lighter, faster, more efficient. Those are just facts, right? And I, I don't think there's too many facts that you can say about the LV2, right? Like when you're comparing them, it's like, oh, it's personal preference. Not really. G6R is smaller, lighter, faster cycling, more efficient. Check, 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 check. It does have four CIs. It can do semi faster than an LV2. Check. You know, it has the same if you count traders or less dynamic seals easier to diagnose and fix check 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 you know the dimensions overall smaller check you know parts availability it, it so those are all very like critical metrics right it's not like a made up one it's like which one has you know the least amount of metric o-rings like who gives a fuck right but you know tech is still making bolts in 2023 like there's you know people like the g6r there's some stuff available um, you know, resale, we've already had 10 years. Like this is stabilized, this is new, and it's 
kind of in the mix, right? So I don't know. I, I, I obviously I'm a G6R guy. I think that a little bit of maintenance and a little bit of, you know, uh, unreliability is worth the trade-off um, for all the things that it does get right, which is size, speed, efficiency, um, and, and shot characteristic. Like both of these are completely stable. This is a little floofier and soft. This is snappier and light, but I think decibel rating is about the same. Like a lot of trade-offs on the LV to get that shot characteristic very specific, to get that quiet and slow. And I don't think those trade-offs were worth it because the G6R does it effectively the same, just in a little bit of a different way here. So, you know, that's my that's my review in 2023. Um, I'll put a little shooting video of each one after this year. You can, you know, take a look. It's not much. I didn't like do a test or something. I live in a, I live downtown, so I can't, <laughs> you know, I have to go when I go play, but um, I've got some shooting videos. You can take a look at those. Um, but, you know, I don't want this to just be like lone wolf or whatever style where, you know, we pull each one out and go down, feed neck this, tube this, you know, like they're, you know, looks are subjective. You know, the things that are subjective are subjective, but there are some, um, you know, actual qualitative differences. So, um, you know, G6R is more efficient. It is lighter. It is smaller. It is faster. Um, both of them break the same amount of paint, which is zero. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like the LPR and the G6R, I've got some that are down in the 60s. And, you know, LV2, you're going to be in the 80s. So, you know, it, you can get the LPR pressure down. You can get the cycling pressure lower to where your, your shots are very soft. So, um, big fan of both. I love that planet still making poppets. I think the LV3 or the LV2.5 will hopefully fix some of the ergonomics, move some things around, and I think this will be a much more compelling choice. Um, as it stands, it's too fucking big, too bulky, too under-engineered, where the G6R, you know, with its no visible grub screws and, you know, beautiful design and this fucking window, it's just, it's like you're fucking ag if you shoot a G6R. Like, that's just the facts of it. So, um, you know, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know, but, you know... Take a look at these shooting videos and let me know what you think.